scientific notation, all numbers follow a certain format or guideline. The leading integer, the leading number in the scientific notation is a number that falls in between 1 and 10. And that value is then always being, multi being multiplied by 10 to some exponential value or some degree. And when we want to convert these to find out what they mean, it's the number of uh, the number on the exponent of the 10 lets us know how many places to move our decimal back to make it a whole number. So in this case, if I'm starting with 5 and 763 thousandths, I need to move the decimal place back six locations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now that my decimal is there, I plug in zeros and I can use commas then to organize it. So this value is representing 5,763,000. Then if I look at 1, or 1 and 24 hundredths, and it is times 10 to the 7th, that means to convert it and find out what it actually means, I move the decimal place back 7 spots. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And so I'm filling in zeros and then putting in my commas. Well, this went from being 1 inch 24 hundredths to being 12 million 400,000. So when we originally looked at those leading numbers, we might have assumed that the 5, um, the, the number with the 5 as the whole number, is going to end up being a larger value when converted. But the biggest deciding factor is the degree on the 10. Moving six places is moving fewer than seven places, so that means that this was a seemingly smaller original number actually has these numbers in a higher place value than the lower degree terms. So when we are asked, being asked to compare different exponential or scientific notations, we're less concerned about the leading number than we are about the degree on the 10. So, if I have a degree of 8 and a degree of 7, that means that this is a whole place value higher. So maybe instead of being um, 1 million, it's end up being 19 million versus only 5 million. So it's whichever value has the larger degree on the 10 is going to be your larger number. And you can take the time to prove it by moving the decimals over, but as I just showed in the earlier example, it's it's a for sure thing. Okay? Because you're in by having an extra value on your degree, you're multiplying your number by an extra 10, which is going to make it even larger. So here I have a 7 and an 8. So I'm less worried about whatever the leading value is. I care about what the degree on that 10 is, okay? Um, when they have the same degrees, they both have, in this case, 10 to the 6th, then I care about the value of the leading number. Well, 2.4 is less than 4.878, so then in this case, the, the second value is going to be a larger quantity. Here we're versus 10 to the 9th versus 10 to the 8th. Not even looking at the leading one. I know that this is going to be larger. And we know that because the number in front is always a one whole number place value and then whatever the decimal is after that. Okay? 6 versus 7. 7 is going to be larger. And then these both have 10 to the 7th, so we have to look at that leading number. Well, they both share the same digit for the 1s. So then we look at the 10s. Same, so now we have to look at the hundreds place value. Seven hundreds, hundredths is larger than one hundredths, so our first value is going to be the greater one. For the second question, it asked us, well, how did we determine that one value was smaller than the second value and you needed to provide a written explanation? And there could be different ways that you explain this. One is you could have gone ahead and moved all of the, the decimal places over and said, well, you know, this value is less than the second value when you have them in their full format. But we can also say that the first scientific notation 
had a smaller degree on the 10, so we knew its leading value, its leading whole number was going to be one place value beneath the leading place value of the second scientific notation. Um, or you can just say the second scientific notation value was multiplied by 10 one more time than the first scientific notation value. So there's a, a bit of flexibility, okay? Just making sure that you're explaining that the, the first one had fewer, had a smaller place value compared to the second value. When it came to comparing the values in the third question, for question number three, how did we determine it? And explaining it again, one way was saying, well, the because the numbers were similar, we're looking at, you know, we're just looking at the degree on the 10. Six is less than seven. So it had, it moved the one over fewer places. You could have also provided, you know, um, definitive place values. Oh, the one in the first notation had the one in the, the one millions, whereas the one in the second notation was in the 10 millions spot. So it's going to be worth more than the first one. The final question asks us to place the planets in order of size, from the smallest to the largest. So to do that, again, we, in comparing sizes, we always look with, to the degree on the 10. So the smallest value would be 10 to the 6th. So we find all of our 10 to the 6th options, and then we start comparing then the leading values. If these three are the same between Pluto, Mercury, and Mars, I need to start with the smallest leading value, and 2.37 is smaller than our other two values. So Pluto is going to go first, and we'll just cross it off so we're not looking at it anymore. Then between Mercury and Mars, Mercury has a smaller leading value than the other one, so it's Mercury. Then Mars. So now all of our 10 to the 6th powers are done, so we look to the next size up, which is 10 to the 7th. So we have 10 to the 7th, 10 to the 7th, 10 to the 7th, and 10 to the 7th. So then we start looking at the leading values, okay? So I have a 1.21 versus a 1.28. So my 2.1 is smaller, making it Venus. And then 1.28 for Earth. Those are squared away. And then my last 10 to the 7s are a leading of 4 or a leading of 5. 4 is smaller, so it's going to be Neptune. Then Uranus. And then we are down to our 10 to the 8s. We have Saturn and Jupiter. Well, we hopefully all know Jupiter's larger. So we knew that answer, but we can also just see here with the numbers that Saturn goes next and Jupiter is last. 